Good morning, Reefers. I'm Daniel, and this is our 220 display tank. It's about time I show you behind the scenes and let you know how we run things. Um, as you know, this is a work in progress, and we just recently redid all the rock work to make it more feng shui for the fish and corals. It used to be 400 pounds of rock just leaning up against the back of the glass. And over time, I just got bored with that. And it was an all SPS system, and now I want to go LPS and kind of a mixed reef. So let's go around back, and I'll show you the sump. And I'll work our way around from there. Here we are behind the scenes. One of the things I do love about my tank now is that since I spend so much time back here, I can actually see both sides of the tank now into it which has always been an issue for me, so I feel much happier about it. Um, it was devastating taking down all the rock work after years of having it established, but this is what I wanted. So, I think I'm happy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty damn happy about it. When I put this, when I originally picked out this tank and put it in, it was a quick spur of the moment thing, so, I didn't have much time to design, so I just bought a standard tank. But this is my corner overflows on the 220. I'm not too thrilled with overflows being in the tank like this. I would rather have um, a ghost overflow, the top box system, instead of this. I find overflows old fashioned, but they're great for reef tanks, but I wouldn't do it in a custom build. So, anyway, you can see that I put these really cool acrylic covers, one to protect the light so I don't have algae growing in there, and two, because they look awesome, and they actually do quiet down the drains a lot. So, we make those if anybody ever wants one for their tank, they can ask about those protectors. But, yeah, so I like to put my heater in the overflow, and anytime I find a sponge in the tank, I will place it back here. So I don't know how much you guys can see, but there's some sponges that have been growing. And who knows what else you'll find in here. So, the heater and the overflow gives you good distribution. As long as your tank's moving, so I have one in each side, and you can see the sponge, little sponge balls growing all over this thing. I like to use palm liner just to keep the light for the refugium in here at nighttime. I don't like seeing the shine through, and I put Velcro on here. So, one quick pull, and it reveals my sump. And you can see the trigger system that I'm using. And then I added two extra overflow boxes on each side, just to give me a lot of extra water. Um, I'm using a Coral Box Protein Skimmer, which I feel a lot of people go oversized with their skimmers. Um, it's great if you have a ton of fish and you need to skim, but our water is usually pretty clean anyway, being a coral system. So I'm happy with using smaller skimmers. And here's my Jibo return pump that goes up and feeds both sides of the tank. Okay, somebody had to come and interrupt me when I was working. Bentley, say hi to everybody. What are you doing, Bentley? I don't know if you guys ever hear barking in the background. This is the culprit. So, this is my little buddy. So, anyway. Here's my sump as I'll continue the tour. I have these beautiful shop lights that I just bent into little squares. 
and actually show that in another video on YouTube. Um, they're just covering my refugium and I have it filled with Calorpa. This is inside the refugium. I keep it covered just to eliminate evap. There's tons of sponges growing in here and every once in a while I'll clean this out. Now my, what I use for my auto top off system is this little vacuum line reader which will open and close the gravity fed system. Um, and you should always replace these things every once in a while. I'll hold this light over here as you can see. But yeah, things break, clips fall apart. So check everything once in a while. I also installed um, a flapper valve so I don't get drained back when my power goes out. Uh, and my tank doesn't lose a lot of water up top and it just helps keep the sump from overflowing. I used to get a ton of drainage back in. So that's from having the extra tanks. And the speed of the pump always causes extra water to drain back. So yeah, so here's the gravity fed auto top off 55 gallons. This is all RODI water from this system. And the reason I use a gravity fed auto top off is because I don't want any issues again. Um, <clears throat> and there's a float. There's an extra float in this one for redundancy. Like most people in this hobby, I love gadgets. And I used to have, oh my gosh, a million gadgets. I had a Reef Angel, a whole tank monitoring system. That went haywire. And I'll just tell you, sometimes less is more. I don't like to cram stuff like I used to. Um, and I'll talk about that too, if anyone has any questions on tank monitoring systems. But sometimes you get too paranoid about your parameters and you tend to overreact. and spike your own tank and system by trying to chase the numbers so my system is very basic I have a dosing pump and it controls my alkalinity magnesium and calcium and I don't have any more issues like I do with the calcium reactor where I burn my coral CO2 letting into the tank um, regulators not working yes this can break but less chance of ever having an issue with this dosing system so and then everyone I always recommend you should use carbon and GFO for the time being I'm using these old reactors just because I had them but I don't like these either these reactors to me they're great like you said if you have them but they're outside the sump and if there is ever a problem and it leaks the seal or hose breaks it will it will leak all over my floor and run my system dry. So, it's nice that I have a ball valve there, auto shut off, but yeah. Redundancy is key when it comes to taking care of your sump.